Greetings, Embers, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you are new here and enjoy what you are hearing, or you've been here already and you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Not only does it help the channel out, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab your snacks, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Paranormal Encounters. Right after this intro and ad will play, I'll read the first story and ad will play. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. I'm not sure if these are paranormal activity, but they sure did creep me out and my family. So I have lived in a pretty small house for nine years, and these are the most weird ones. Let me tell you first a bit about my house. When you enter my house, there is the living room, and when you go to the right, there are the stairs to the second floor. Right next to the stairs is my sister's room, and to the left of those stairs is the kitchen. You can get to the kitchen from the living room. There is this wall in the middle. I don't know what it's called because I live in Finland. And when you go to the upstairs, to the right, that's my room. And then to the left is another room. My room is directly on top of the kitchen, and the other rooms are directly on top of my sister's room. My first experience was about four years ago upstairs with my mom. It started with me just about going to sleep, and I see my toy dog just looking at me in a creepy way. I was bothered, and I turned it to look at the opposite way, and in the morning, it was looking at me again. I knew no one visited my room at the time. The rest have been the most recent, and have all actually happened between a year. This too happened in my room upstairs, but I did not witness it. So it went like this, according to my sister who did experience this. She was just chilling with her friend and decides to take a photo on Snapchat. And to her surprise, there is this black thing with two white dots under the bed. And she just creeps out and tells her friend about it and shows the picture. It could have been just a plastic bottle, but the underside of her bed was completely empty. These two happened in my sister's room, downstairs in the middle of the night, about two months ago. My sister was in her room with her friend again, the same one, and they just hear some footsteps from outside with high heels walking around the middle wall thing. Then the steps got more louder and faster and reached my sister's door. Then the steps stop, and she hears whispering from the top corner of the room and it was very unclear and didn't understand anything. Then about three weeks later, this weird noise appears and then she heard some nagging in front of her. I don't know what to think about this. Has anyone else experienced this? Here's just a few things about me. I'm currently 17, live in Victoria, Australia, and I'm a major believer in the paranormal. Okay, with that out of the way, let me explain my predicament. My family and I just moved into a rental house about one and a half or two months ago and have been noticing a shadow out of the corner of our eyes. It started off in only one place where we'd see it pass by the one window this was interesting to me because several of my family members said they've seen the same thing. And when we decided to finally talk to each other about it, we'd all discovered that we'd seen similar or same things. At first, we kind of just shrugged it off. That was until I had my own personal experience. My elder brother and I had been sitting at the dining room table. The table is right next to the kitchen bench for reference when we saw a shadow of a head out of the corner of our eyes poke up, so it was just sticking over the bench. 
But of course, when we'd look, there'd be nothing there. Now, we have two dogs that are in the house, and at first we thought it was one of them. But that was until we realized no one was in the room with my sisters, and the other was upstairs asleep at our feet. That freaked us out a little bit, but whatever. It wasn't giving off a bad vibe. So we continued with whatever we were doing. Before we decided to head off to bed, we'd actually seen it do a couple more things. Just popping what I assume is its head up and down the bench. Which of course, when we'd look at it, it'd be gone. My personal experience comes after when we'd finally decided to go to bed probably at around 12 to 1 a.m. at that point. I'd gone to my bathroom after putting the other dog in my room. One dog was with my sisters and one was with me at night. Now, where the sink is situated in the bathroom is at the opposite end of the door, so you'd have to back to the door when you needed to wash your hands. I'd finished washing my hands and turned around to locate a towel or something to dry them off with when I saw a shadow figure walk past the door frame. Me, being in kind of a curious daze, while keeping my head straight, walked very slowly to the door frame, which leads to the small hallway. And once I reached the opening, I could see it out of the corner of my eye. It was so close. I could have slightly lifted my hand and would have touched it. But of course, once I looked directly at it, it disappeared. After my encounter, I haven't seen it. It's been almost two weeks now. I don't believe whatever it is, is bad. I'd say it gives off the vibe of a curious animal. Now for the actual question. Does anyone know what this thing is? Or if anyone has their own experiences and stories? because I'd really like to know more about our little shadow friend. I should start this by saying I didn't used to believe in ghosts. I work in a building from the 1890s that I'm told was once a brothel. Once, I was working at night when no one else was there to get some extra work done. A lot of weird stuff happens on the second floor, and a little after 3 a.m., I had to go up there to put some things away and lock up. The light switch is at the top of the stairs, so I had to walk up the stairs in the dark. There are no windows in the hallway, so the only light was coming up from the bottom of the stairs. As I reached the top of the stairs, I thought I saw a human figure walk across the hall from one room to another through two closed and locked doors and fast, like a video sped up at 50%. I was pretty freaked out, but skeptical. Maybe I just imagined it. The second floor of this building has always freaked me out at night. My coworkers too. So I turned on the light at the top of the stairs and walked down the hall to put some things away in the storeroom. While in the storeroom, a large machine part that has a flat bottom and was just sitting there on the table fell over while I had my back turned. It couldn't have just fallen over on its own or been knocked over by me. My heart started pounding and I said out loud, I'm sorry, fuck this, I'm leaving now. I locked the storeroom and started walking quickly back down the hallway. As I walked, a little gust of wind blew through the hallway from behind me. There were no doors or windows open to the outside anywhere in the building, and no one else was there to have opened one, so it wasn't the result of a natural pressure differential. I started speed walking. As I passed between the two doors where I had seen the fast-moving apparition, I swear I heard a woman's voice whisper my name behind me. I turned off the light and stumbled quickly down the stairs. Halfway down there, there's a small landing with a door. I fumbled with the latch that held the door open, terrified to look back into the dark hallway above me. I got the door closed, and as I locked it, I felt sure that there was something on the other side. I don't know, I was panicking. I clocked out and got the hell out of there as quickly as I could. 
A few days later, I went up there before dawn on an opening shift, and I was talking to the ghosts, or whatever, the whole time, apologizing for my intrusion and asking to be left alone. I felt crazy, but it was better than just being haunted again. Everything was normal, except I thought I felt someone lightly grab the back of my shirt as I passed between the two doors. That was the last time I went up there alone in the dark. Backstory. Yes, it's needed. My mom and dad split up when I was about two. My dad eventually ended up with his current wife, and they moved quite far away. Me and my older brother would go up and see him once a month. When he first moved away, he lived in this big house that was set out really odd. You'd enter the house into a tiny hall with the front room on the right, a dining room to the left, and you'd walk through the dining room to the kitchen, which had the back door to the garden as well, as having the bathroom and toilet attached to the kitchen. Yeah, no, super weird. Upstairs was my dad's bedroom to the right, above the front room and to the left was a really long hallway. About halfway down the hallway was my brother's room, to the left if you were just walking down the hall. And at the end, you came face to face with the door to my room. So the story goes that the place was haunted. I was reasonably young, say about 11 or 12. They didn't want to tell me about it because they thought I'd get scared, which I understand. I found out later of the things that had happened to them whilst in the home. S.M., or my dad's current wife, had an incident where she was in the bedroom doing her hair in the mirror. She looked up in the mirror and saw a young girl standing behind her with her arms crossed over her chest. S.M. squealed, closed her eyes, and put her head in her hands. When she looked back up, the girl was gone. There was plenty of other instances of doors opening and closing footsteps up and down the long hall, knocking about in the attic, as well as the dogs acting weird. He had two huge Rottweilers. One day, I was staying the weekend and felt very sick. My family had made plans to go out, but I didn't feel good, so I wasn't up to it. They decided to leave me at home on my dad's PC in the care of the dogs. They didn't want to let me be alone in case something happened. Whilst I was playing on the PC, the dogs went really weird. They were normally quite docile, really friendly, and extremely loving. Well, they started running around the front room barking. Every once in a while, they would stop and just aggressively growl at the fireplace. I stopped and tried to calm them down, but as I knelt next to them, one of them turned and bit me in the face. He was immediately apologetic licking and whimpering whilst asking for cuddles. But I was scared and hurting a bit. He didn't even break the skin, so it wasn't a bad bite, and felt like I was going to throw up. I ran to the bathroom, and the family got home. I told them what happened, and they looked really concerned, but told me to not worry about it and keep an eye on us. A little something about my room. It was dark and really small, it had a tiny window, as well as two huge wardrobes in the corners. I never really felt comfy in that room. I hated being able to see the bedroom door, and I have no idea why. I'd often read in bed and then try and sleep on the floor, which is really odd now that I think about it. I just couldn't get comfy in that bed and always felt very unsafe. Later that night, we all went to bed. I like to read before going to sleep, so I was reading to myself and slowly drifting off to sleep when the bedroom started screaming. I know that sounds weird, but there was just this insanely loud scream coming from my room. I had no idea what was going on, so I immediately panicked. I mean, who wouldn't? I tried to open my door, and it wouldn't budge. I could hear my brother on the other side of the door, also trying to open it, but I couldn't make out what he was saying. 
The screaming was too loud. I heard thumps outside the door. I had no clue what was happening and just kept trying to open the door whilst crying now. Suddenly, the screaming stopped and the door opened right away. My brother, dad, and SM were just standing there staring at me. I was sobbing and my brother hugged me and my dad asked why I was screaming and whether I saw the girl. I said I wasn't and my brother confirmed that he could hear me saying, what? Through the screaming. I stayed in my brother's room that night. The next time I went to my dad's, he had moved homes. I heard the other stories years later. I'd heard other stories about the fireplace being pulled out and things being found, but to be honest, they sound a bit far-fetched to me. I know the above sounds the same, but I know it happened because I lived it. Thank you for listening to my story. Okay, so this happened about two weeks ago, but I wrote it down while it was still fresh in my mind. My mom and I drove down the road to the woods so we could take our puppy for a walk and then post some letters in the village. When we were coming back, it was just starting to get dark, but there was still a good deal of light and I could still see fine without my headlights on. For reference, I live on a hill in a very rural area. And as I was driving, I was coming towards the house, which is right on the bend of the road as you came up. There are two brick sheds on the left as you approach, which we use, and which are kind of across the lane from the house. There is another lane that runs up the side of my house and which is straight on as you drive up the hill. I had to park a few yards away from my house due to limited space. So when I come home, I turn right past my house, drive down to the barn to turn around, and then drive back up to park beside the road so my car is easier to get out of that space again. It's also important to know that these roads were very rarely used by anyone who isn't a neighbor due to the fact that I live on a private estate and neither of these roads actually lead anywhere. Anyway. I was driving up the hill with my mom sitting with the dog in the back. As he's a puppy and we hadn't gotten a cage for the car yet. I also had a bag full of logs in the boot for the wood stove. As we're coming up the hill, I see what I think is my stepdad walking from one of the sheds across the lane and to the house. When I see him, I mention to my mom that it might be better if she got out of the car right outside the house with the dog and ask my stepdad to take the logs out so I don't have to carry it all the way up the lane to the house. But then as we got to the house, we realized two things. Number one, my stepdad's car is not parked outside the house where it usually is, nor is it parked anywhere else down the lane. And two, we just saw my stepdad on the way home finishing up some work he was doing for our landlord. So... Who exactly was that person I just saw? As I'm driving down the lane to turn around and park where I usually do, I'm thinking about the person I saw and trying not to freak out. It was definitely a man. There was just something about his physique, tall and lanky, and the way he walked, kind of like a swagger, that just made it seem like it was a man and not a woman. He was wearing a black hoodie, with the hood up so I couldn't see his face and a pair of camouflage trousers. This is not the kind of thing my stepdad wears, not least because he actually doesn't even own any clothes like that. He's also not lanky and he doesn't swagger, so it clearly wasn't him. So anyway, we get parked and walk up to the house with the dog in the wood and then come to the door. The door is unlocked at this point, my mom is freaking out too because even though she didn't see the person, she's concerned because she definitely locked the door behind her. She's borderline paranoid about locking the door even though we live in the back of beyond. So I believe she locked that door. 
So she thinks that we might have been mistaken, and for whatever reason, my stepdad got a lift home from work and unlocked the door himself. She opens the door and calls out his name. There's no answer. But she hears a bang coming from upstairs that sounds like something falling off of a bed or whatever. She tells me to use my key to lock the door because now it seems like someone is actually in the house. I locked the door and ran over to the tool shed to grab a hammer or something. I couldn't find the light switch, so I just grabbed a Stanley knife on the table and ran back with it. My mom told me not to use it because I could get in trouble for using it on someone, even if they were burglaring the house. But I was scared shitless and read too many creepy stories, so I kept it on hand anyway. My mom phoned my stepdad and told him that there was someone in the house and he effectively told her to stop panicking because it was unlikely. She explained that I saw someone walking out of our shed and then she heard something upstairs. At first he thought we actually had seen him because he had just come back about 15 minutes before, which was why the door was unlocked. But he couldn't have been returned by that time we got home because we passed him near our landlord's house as we were driving back. He said not to worry and that he'd be back in a few minutes. And my mom hung up the phone. She unlocked the door, told me to wait outside with the dog, and she would take a look. I followed her inside with the wood and the dog and the knife now and stood at the foot of the stairs while she went to look around up there. I checked the cupboard in the corner of the dining area and found nothing. Once she came downstairs and found nothing, we relaxed a bit. Or she did. I was still freaking out because I had no idea what I just saw. I went upstairs to double check and look under the beds and in the cupboards, and also found nothing but I was still freaked out because I definitely saw someone and had no idea where the hell it could have gone. So, considering it wasn't my stepdad, there were only a few possibilities now. One of the neighbors came over, went in our shed and disappeared into thin air. They have to have done that because they can only access their property via the road I'd just driven down and I saw nobody. Or... Our other neighbor's son, who has schizophrenia, used to be in the army and also wears camo sometimes, and who has a history of wandering around our neighborhood's yard and following my neighbor around, decided to go into our shed for some reason. This was later ruled out because when my stepdad got back, he told us that he knew my neighbor's son was now living in a home for the mentally ill way down the coast. Also. This neighbor's house is at the end of the same street I'd just driven down, so I would have seen him walking down the lane as I drove down to the neighbor's house, turned around, and drove back up to park. I didn't see him, nor anyone else for that matter. The only other explanation is that someone came looking for my stepdad and then walked off somewhere we couldn't see. But I don't know. That would be really weird. The only road used frequently is the one I drove down. The only other road was a very rocky, unpaved track that leads to a barn and literally nothing else. So I don't know why someone would go down there. Also, I could see right down this road when I was coming up the hill, and that person literally just disappeared behind my mom's car, where the front door is. As for the bang my mom heard, I honestly think that was just the cat jumping off my bed upstairs. But in the moment, it was scary because I'd also just seen someone walking across the lane to the house. And the adrenaline was pumping, I guess. So I don't really know what this was. I do know that the figure was solid enough for me to think it was an actual person and not a ghost. I also know that this is not the first time we've seen or heard unexplained things in that house. Two days after we moved in, my mom and I both heard what sounded like my voice downstairs saying, Oh, what? 
and we both thought that the other had said it. I don't sound like my mom at all, really. But when you hear a female voice, your brain kind of makes sense of it and assumes it's the only other person it could be, which in this case was my mom. It was only after I found out that it wasn't my mom that I thought back to the sound and realized it really sounded more like my own voice than hers. My mom has also seen a very solid looking cat, a totally different colored one to our two walking up to the door as if it were going to go out the cat flap, and then no cat flap sound. When she went to look for the cat, it was not there or outside, and both of our cats were still upstairs. She also seen a small white dog appear out of nowhere and seemingly disappear, and saw someone's arm pulling out the drawers of her dresser when she was outside looking into her bedroom window. She assumed it was my stepdad, only for him to tell her he hadn't even gotten out of bed yet. What creeps me out more about this is that one of my stepdad's workmate has seen someone walking out of our shed before too. He came to pick him up for work one time and was waiting by the house when he saw what he thought was my stepdad come out of the shed, walk through the gate beside it and disappeared behind the building. When my stepdad then walked out of the house, he was obviously pretty surprised. I've had many encounters with ghosts, but this is the first time I've seen a solid apparition in this place. Considering that the house is probably about four to 500 years old, I guess it's not that weird. Plus, there's the story of the former resident, who was a gamekeeper, having shot himself a few decades ago, which would explain some stuff, maybe. Like the camo trousers, I don't know. But to this day, I'm still really freaked out. When I was 16, I got a job as a personal assistant and cleaning lady for a very wealthy couple who lived in a big, beautiful mansion on Lake Michigan. It was a great job at the time, but after a while, I had to quit because of everything going on, and I'll tell you exactly what that was. I made $12 an hour as a 16-year-old girl, and that was just crazy to me at the time. But now I know it's because the homeowners couldn't get anyone to stay and work for them. It could very well be because they were both major assholes. But I honestly didn't see them all that much during the school year, so it was fine. I would work 40-hour weeks in the summer and part-time while I was in school. So, during the school year, I would hardly ever see the homeowners and would be left alone to clean the house. I had a key, alarm code, and gate code, so I let myself in and out. In the summer months, I had help from a few other employees. But in the school gear, I did not. At first, I loved being in the house by myself. Don't get me wrong. The place was absolutely gorgeous, right on Lake Michigan. So I'd always open all the curtains to let the sunlight in and blast the surround sound speakers while I cleaned. It wasn't until I was by myself that I started noticing how weird the place was. Nothing ever exactly felt welcoming about the place. Sure, it was pretty to look at, but it was modern and everything was hard marble and stone. Not very homey feeling. My first experience happened when I was cleaning one day in silence. I remember specifically not turning on the music because I had a bad headache that day. All of a sudden, the speaker to the upstairs part of the house turned on. The way their speaker system works, you can control it by a touchpad in the kitchen which would play the music everywhere besides the basement and master bedroom. To play music in those areas, you have to go to that touchpad and turn it on by the control pad and sync it up with the rest of the house. The reason this was so alarming was I was the only one there. I walked up the stairs to go check out what was going on and figured out why the music was turned on seemingly by itself. 
I looked around and called out the homeowner's name, thinking someone had just come in without me noticing or something. But the doors were all still locked and no one was home. I shut off the music and went back downstairs, not thinking much of it. It started happening more often. I'd be listening to music and it would turn off. Or it would be off and would turn on in a completely different area of the house. I brushed it off as faulty and didn't think much of it. The second most prevalent story I remember from working was when I was cleaning the workout room in their basement. I never wanted to go into this room, and I really couldn't tell you why. Something about this room was weird. It was super cold and dark, and I just felt really anxious in that room. I definitely tried to avoid it, but my boss would get mad when dust would build up, so I forced myself to go in there once a week to tidy up. So anyway, I was in the workout room, using a broom and a mop. I remember sweeping up the floor and propping the broom up against the machine while I was using the mop. Suddenly, the broom fell over, hitting the wall, the baseboard, and the floor as it fell, causing three distinct knocks. What I heard after scared me so badly I refused to go into that room by myself ever again. Immediately following the knocks made by the broom falling, three knocks responded in the exact pattern the broom fell, but it was coming from inside of the wall. I know what you're thinking, but no, it was not an echo. It was not a scared animal. It was knocking deliberate knocking. I was completely alone in a big, quiet house in the middle of nowhere and someone is knocking back at me from inside the wall. To this day, I have absolutely no explanation for what I had experienced. Lastly, this was my first and only time I had ever seen anything paranormal with my two eyes. And I know this time, it's not me being paranoid or crazy, because I was with a co-worker who saw it too. Sometimes my boss would rent out her guest house, and we would clean it before the guests arrived. So this guest house has a glass hallway leading from one main area of the house to another. I was cleaning the glass while one of the co-workers, Bob, was standing next to me, talking. Just then, I catch a glimpse of what looked like a boy in a blue shirt running by. I turned to my head just as Bob turned his as well. He asked me if I saw that too, and I responded, yes. I'm sorry if this was really long, but those are the craziest things that's happened while I was there that I can remember. I know there's more, but it was almost six years ago now. But if anything more comes up to me, I will definitely be sure to add to this story or write part two. This is an older one and certainly a memory I've tried for decades to forget. Due to my father's work, we were constantly chasing after his jobs sometimes spending only a few months in a single location. Anyway, after my father got a new job in a small town, we moved into a rather nice house on a dead-end road. It was a large house with wood floors and a generally exceptional feel about it. Glad to have found a nice house in our price range, we didn't really think too much on why it was empty and why the landlords were willing to rent it out for such a very low cost. It would take a few months before we found out ourselves what was going on. The haunting started as just a feeling that we kids would get from time to time. At first, it was just a general sense of unease, but this quickly escalated. As time went on, we slowly transformed from simply thinking we were being watched to seeing forms in the corner of our vision. The feeling of being watched had spread into the night at this point, and few of us were able to get a full night's rest. This continued on until we began to see things much closer to the forefront of our vision, and we had started seeing dark forms in the night, 
scaring us to the point that we'd all be asleep on the same bed just for a weak sense of security. Then we found the reason for the haunting. My brother and I were cleaning up an old closet that we had simply dumped a bunch of our toys into after we moved. The bottom of it had a small wall making it into something of a built-in toy chest. We finally had some boxes to hold our things and no longer needed to leave them in the closet. As we pulled out our things, we noticed that the carpet was loose. We were kids, and as such, we were not very smart. Instead of telling our parents, we just pulled the carpet back, revealing something none of us would ever forget. A tombstone. It was right there, with the name and date already carved into it. Thinking that there was someone buried in our closet, we quickly showed the tombstone to our parents. Thankfully, they decided to remove it from the house, and that, we thought, was that. But the haunting didn't stop. We started having nightmares and sick spells whenever we were alone in the house. And where it went from there was something a seven-year-old me could not understand. All I knew was fear as I would awake at all hours in the night to see a dark figure standing over me, watching me sleep. I would cover my head in my sheets and pray to God to protect me. Usually it worked, but sometimes I would lower the sheet to see a dark, ghostly face now staring at me in the eye, its face only inches from mine. Soon, we were all seeing faces in the dark, and we stopped doing things on our own during the night. We would share beds, and we would never get up and do anything on our own, often waking up whomever we were sleeping with to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water. The final straw was the night I was foolishly walking around the house at night during a lightning storm, and as I walked into my room, lightning flashed at just the right moment and I saw a figure under my bed staring at me with a grin that literally ran from ear to ear. Its needle-like teeth bared for me to see. I screamed in absolute terror, and it would take days for me to be willing to even play in my room. We removed the bed frames and started sleeping with our mattress on the floor for protection from whatever it was that I saw but the nightmares and sightings would continue. Thankfully, my father's job moved to a new location and we were able to leave that house. In just six months, we went from happy to having such a nice home to wanting nothing more than to leave it behind. I will never forget that horror and it has left permanent scars on my soul. Even to this day, over 25 years later, I still have nightmares about living in that house. Oh, God only knows what monsters were living there with us. Just writing this has left my heart pounding with fear at this very moment. I live in Adelaide in South Australia. I moved to the city from a small country town with my partner. Mrs. Bragacarp, roughly 10 years ago now. We moved into a small two-story townhome with another friend. It was a really nice place, clearly an older building, but the interior had been modernized. Everything started off okay. Our friend took the master bedroom, which came with a walk-in robe, while we took the room next door. Both bedrooms and a bathroom were on the second floor. Under the stairs was a small broom cupboard. We didn't use it much at first because for some reason it was extremely cold in there. Nothing could heat it up either, not even a heater. We assumed there was a hole leading to the outside somewhere and left it at that. It was about a month into living there that the first weird thing occurred. I was home alone, sitting downstairs with the TV on quietly while I read a book and I heard my name. I looked at the TV, thinking that someone on there must also be named Bradgacarp. Nope, nobody on that episode of Scrubs named that. Out of sheer curiosity, though, 
I turned the TV off and listened intently. Nothing. So I figured it must have been my imagination and went to turn the TV back on. As I pressed the power button, I heard my name again, and the voice was definitely coming from upstairs. I believe since I was a kid due to other experiences, but this really got my hairs on end. I called Mrs. B and asked when she would be home. Not until tomorrow. I'm staying at my mom's tonight. Our other housemate was also away. Great. I turned the TV back on, raised the volume, found some blankets in a cold cupboard, and slept downstairs that night. The name calling continued on and off for a few months, but our other housemate never heard it. In fact, she didn't believe in any paranormal things and thought I was making it up. Mrs. B did, though, and agreed there was something else in the house. Not long after, our housemate moved out and we took over the master bedroom. A few days later, a handyman came to install a TV antenna plug on the wall downstairs. To get wires through the walls, he had to go into the crawl space upstairs. It was around lunchtime and we had an awesome takeaway place around the corner. I let the guy know I was ducking out for 10 minutes or so to go grab food and left him in the crawl space. When I got back, I found him downstairs looking confused. Did you come back about five minutes ago and call my name? He asked. I said no. He explained that he heard the door open and close and then his name was called. He chalked it up to my next door neighbor, but I knew that wasn't it. The real terror began about a week after that. I came home from work at about 8 p.m. Mrs. B was working late and wouldn't be home until midnight. But when I walked to the back door, I distinctly heard her call my name from upstairs. I called back that I didn't think she'd be home yet and made my way upstairs. Opening the bedroom door, I instantly realized that it was not Mrs. B who called me. A wave of hate burst from that room and hit me like a ton of bricks. Never before and never again have I felt a presence like that. Whatever the hell it was did not like me at all. I quickly got changed and took a look around the room. The walk-in robe had a white curtain for a door, and I closed it every morning when we left the house. It was wide open. I raced back downstairs, left the house, and went to the pub. I met Mrs. B at home when she finished and told her what had happened. She didn't believe me at first, but when she saw how terrified I was of our room, she realized I was not lying. The hate in that room was gone, but I could still feel something. We went to bed, and I closed the robe curtain. I swear I could feel eyes on me as I did so. I slept on the side of the bed furthest away from it. In the morning, that curtain was open. We lived in that house for another couple of months, and I never experienced the hate as intense as that again until our final day into the house. But there was still something there, something that did not want me there. I put all my clothes in a spare room so I didn't have to go into the walk-in because that's where whatever it was felt strongest to me. It was also the location of the crawl space hatch. Friends heard the voices calling out sometimes, but nobody else felt the presence like I did. The day we moved in, I was the last one there. As I was checking over all the rooms and locks for the last time, I heard my name. I shivered but ignored it this time and kept doing what I had to do. I checked the last lock and walked out of the house for the last time. I got into my car and looked up at the master bedroom window, and I swear, without a doubt, there was a woman up there glaring at me. That feeling of pure hatred hit me for the last time. I floored it out of that street and never looked back. Mrs. B to this day doesn't believe me about that because she didn't see it with her own eyes. I can appreciate the need to see it to believe, but I know what I saw, and I hope I never see it again. From what I heard, the tenants after us didn't stay long. I did some research, 
but couldn't find any debts in that home. So I'm not too sure where whatever it was came from. All I know was that it was absolutely real and it scared the ever living hell out of me. First off, I just want to say the obligatory. I don't believe in ghosts. I consider myself a rationalist and always try to look for a rational and logical explanation for things without jumping to conclusion. That being said, I'm having a lot of trouble explaining what I've been experiencing in our new house these last few months. Me and my wife recently moved into an old army house they're offered to all acting soldiers in my country and are very cheap. Most of them were built in the 60s and 80s. Our house is at the back of a much larger section, at the top of a hill, and overlooking a valley with a dense native forest below. It was very cozy and offers a lot of privacy with no immediate neighbors and a good view. At first, I had a couple weird encounters that left me scratching my head, such as when I was walking from the front door to my car when I heard a loud banging on my tin roof, as if something hard like an acorn had landed on it and was bouncing down. Whatever it was, it bounced off the roof and into the branches of the tree in our front yard, which began to sag under the weight. The thing is, there are no branches hanging over our house that could have dropped anything, and I couldn't see anything fall off the roof, nor did anything land on the ground after it made the tree branches sag. I thought it was weird and mentioned it to my wife at the time, but just sort of brushed it off. Then there were the windows in my living room. Me and my wife live alone. I had our windows open to let the breeze in because it was a hot summer's night and I decided to close them since it was time for bed. As I closed them, my wife called me outside to the backyard since she had spotted the International Space Station moving across the night sky. After I came back in, I sat down on the couch and I noticed the curtains were flapping in the wind. I walked over to check and the window I had just closed was wide open. I know for certain I had closed it just moments ago and my wife was outside the entire time, so I know she couldn't have opened it. I asked if she saw me close the window and she said she was standing in the doorway and watched me do it. I kept asking her if she was messing with me, but I just can't figure out how it could have happened. The last and most troubling incident is what prompted me to make this post. Last night, I went to bed just after my wife, who was already asleep. I lay in bed browsing on my phone when suddenly I noticed I could hear what sounded like heavy breathing. I stopped and listened for a moment, assuming it was just my wife snoring or something. But she was sleeping right next to me, and this sounded like it was coming from the far corner of the bedroom. I focused on the sound for what felt like several minutes while being paralyzed with fear. I was convinced somebody was standing at the end of my bed. I woke up my wife, she was half asleep, until I said I thought it sounded like someone was in the house, which made her bolt up, and then she said she could hear it too. I then turned on all the lights and went around the house checking all of our locks and cupboards. I didn't get much sleep that night. Has anybody experienced anything like this before? Am I just being paranoid or stupid? I'm usually quite level-headed, but this is starting to make me question my own sanity and judgment. It was a pretty old house. It still had horsehair insulation, that velvet damask wallpaper, dirt floor basement, crystal doorknobs, cubby holes that you could crawl from one room to another, and a really nice clawfoot tub along with an awesome wood stove. It was big enough that it had a front and back staircase. The front staircase was really ornate, 
but the back staircase was basically just plywood. Okay, so now you have a visual. On with my family's experiences. When I was very young, I became more aware of the noises and actions, and my parents would tell me it was all in my head. The older I got, I began to doubt that. Starting with the everyday and night experiences, there were footsteps up and down every night, mostly heard on a creaky back staircase. Low knocks on the walls, taps on the windows, items moved or crashed on the floor, and the scariest was gentle scratching noises under my bed and feeling someone sit on my bed. I began wrapping my blankets over my head and blocking my ears with my fingers. Around 10, it became more intense, doors opening and closing with enough force that it was definitely not a draft. The silverware door was completely pulled out and smashed to the floor when everyone was in the living room. Feeling not so much a tug on my hair, but feeling like someone was lifting up strands. At this point, my little brother, who was six years old, and me, ten years old, had been sharing a bedroom. All the rooms were huge. My dad built me my own bedroom that was previously attic space, but on the same floor. It was huge and was more like a living room with a bedroom around the corner. Every couple of days, I would be in bed and I'd hear my door creak open. Someone walk over to my bed and sit down. It was terrifying. I still used my go-to blankets over my head and finger in my ears. The knocks on the walls started to become louder and fast. The scratching under my bed seemed to be a bit more violent. My parents still dismissed our fears. When I was around 11 or 12, it became even more intense. I had to babysit my little brother almost every day during the week. This was back in the day when TVs had knobs to change the channels. We would be in the living room watching TV and the knobs would visually turn channels. Sometimes only a few channels over and other times fast through a bunch of channels. Like my parents, I downplayed it to my little brother and just took him outside to play pickle or kick the can. The most notable experience was walking down the back stairs. A strand of my hair was tugged hard and I heard distinct breathing in my ear. I grabbed my brother and went across the street and waited in the pouring rain for my parents to get home. Ironically, where we waited was an entrance to an old cemetery and I don't believe it was related to the haunting. The older I got, the more aggressive it got. TV knobs would still be turning, curtains moving, steps up the stairs turned to stomps. The weirdest to me was the phone cord. It was one of those extremely long cords. The whole family was in the kitchen, and it started spinning. Not like a regular spin, but diagonally like a lasso at about five feet off the wall. My parents downplayed that too, but by then it didn't matter. I started to become desensitized. Going into fifth or sixth grade, I acquired a best friend. She would come over and it turned out we were both really into the supernatural. Watcher in the Woods with Betty Davis was our favorite movie. Anyways, I ended up telling her about the house, and we came up with a brilliant plan to buy one of the Hasbro Ouija boards. Candles lit and everything. Never even thinking it would work, and I don't remember if it actually did. But one dumb day while babysitting, I had my innocent little brother play with me. The board immediately worked. My brother was freaked out, but my dumbass kept going. I don't remember the exact questions, but one of the answers was, kill John. That was my little brother. My addiction with all things horror, movies, books too, led me to believe I had to burn the board. I took it out to the side yard and tried to burn it, but it just scorched a little bit. My father asked why there was a pile of burnt leaves and sticks. I told him why and he got really serious. 
He dug the board out of the sticks and leaves and tried to burn it himself in the wood stove. It just got scorched with more charcoal-like. He just threw it in the trash after that. Sorry, I know this is insanely long, but I really enjoy remembering. After that, things didn't get so much worse, but different. I had a huge double closet filled with metal hangers. The sound of them clanking against each other like a hand was sweeping over them became the new scare. I reverted to my usual fingers in the ears, blankets over my head. But then I started to get pissed. I was so sick of being scared, I started yelling at whatever it was to leave us alone whenever it happened, and yelling that I wasn't scared anymore, and telling it to fuck off. I still cuss like a truck driver. I had a game most people won't remember called Boggle. It was a cube of letters you shook up and then tried to find as many words as possible. One day, I sat in the middle of the living room and arranged the letters to say fuck you before bed. I woke up to the words being scrambled to say hump. Gross, I know. Everything ramped up. Louder knocks, heavier sitting on the bed, and more frequent visits into my room. By then, I didn't give a fuck for real. I know it sounds weird, but I started calling out before I went to bed to wake me up at a certain time, and it actually did with a more gentle knock by my bed. When something visual happened, I would say, cut it out. It didn't really listen that much, but sometimes it did. So, end of that experience. By the time I started fighting back, we moved. A few years later, my parents admitted it was haunted and described some of their experiences too. I am still drawn to that house and am dying to walk through it again to see if it remembers me. Weird, I know. I have researched the history of the owners or events related to that house for forever. The rumor was that an older woman died there and had an Irish wake and funeral. It was held in the house and lasted seven days. I have desperately searched for the previous owner's names but found nothing. One notable thing is that the house has changed hands quite a few times since then. A few months ago, I brought it up to my mom. She told me the previous owners were a woman and her son that was a well-known judge. Their last names were Moriarty. Also told me how the day after the house was sold, the woman's daughter ripped the kitchen phone right off the wall and screamed at my mother that now she couldn't use it to make long distance phone calls. It didn't take long to find info on the son. Nothing on the mother though. He was a well-known judge. This is the most fucked up thing I've learned from his obituary. He took a sabbatical to travel the world to visit sites that people claim to have seen the Virgin Mary. Why that is important is, out of everything that happened, seeing the image, classic depiction by the way, of the Virgin Mary in my little brother's bedroom window was the most predominant memory. I wasn't scared, but more curious, and then it faded. What are the chances? Also to note, I am agnostic, but for some reason, I have always felt a deep connection with her representation. And when I feel I need someone to guide me, I recite the Hail Mary. Thank you for listening to my story. Like I said, it is more for therapeutic reasons. I have more stories that have happened throughout my life, including stupidly using a homemade Ouija when I was about 15 or 16. I pretended to be a little boy, gave death details and location in New Hampshire, and it became more obvious we weren't communicating with a child. At present time, I have been seeing moving shadows out of the corner of my eyes, and every once in a while, I see orbs. It is what it is. I still am dying to take a tour of that house, though.
And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true paranormal encounters. I'd like to take a moment and give a very special thank you to the reformed members of Back to Ashes. Tina Mead, Colt Stone Wolf, Mrs. Interscare, Luz Crispin, Tammy Slayton, CAG, Denise S, Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma DW, Christy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Batty's Niece. Thank you all for your continued support. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.